my gosh, I'm going to die. Where's the snowman? Oh, there's no snow. scary dream. I dream that there's no snow. It's been so hot out, you guys. We gotta find out how to make some snow. I know what we're gonna do today. Well, where are we gonna find some snow? Well, this researcher, Kyoko Akita, knows and studies about snow. We should go see her. Let's do it. Ready, set, go. Where are we? She's on the third floor. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Kyoko? Yes, I am. Uh, we were wondering if you could teach us something about snow. Sure, go on in. I remember last winter we had quite a bit more snowy days in March. I might be wrong because I don't count them. Some people love to record that. Remember, we had a really cold, cold Feb January and, Feb and uh, a couple of big blizzards at the time. But March we really got dry and warm pretty quickly. and. Last year we had still snow in March, I think. So we're in for dry, dry, water limited year this year. Eight year, how the snow has accumulated over these months. And as the uh, uh, winter ends and spring comes, March and then into April, this colored area decreases. That means snow melting in spring. It's really hot in here. Can we go outside and talk? Sure, let's go. One of the instruments is called uh, two-dimensional video distrometer. It's about this height, this big, and it sits on the ground. And the purpose of it is to collect samples of rain and snow and take pictures of it at very high frequency. And so that you can get a distribution how, the, how many counts of raindrops or so snowflakes were there for a given size. You can make that kind of size distribution. You can also measure rain rate, snow rate. Um, that's the purpose of that instrument. Um, so using the, the two-dimensional video distributor, you can only collect the snow samples during the winter time. So I don't do it this winter, but many winters, I go out in the field where the instrument sits and then take data set, you know, collect data sets. And then, so that's done in winter. And what happens afterwards, you can't just collect data and then let it sit, right? So during the spring and summer, you analyze the data set. Because, the, because there's so many snowflakes, so many raindrops, you can take a long time to analyze. And to analyze the data, you need to write your own analysis program on the computer using the computer language that you know. And I became really good at it, efficient at it, and it's kind of like mm, um, doing a um, video game, something like that. You really get to think about it, and then you think of a problem. How can I make this data set look a certain way on, on the graph? Then you kind of try to think through what's the best way of doing that, and then you all of a sudden you get it. Oh, I know how to process this data. And you write the program and then plot it out, make a graphics visualization out of it. And 
I get a real sense of accomplishment doing that. Um, I never thought that I'll be good in the science, field of science, but coming to the U.S. when I was young, a um, long time ago, I discovered something different about the sky in the U.S. and sky in where I grew up in Japan. In the U.S., the sky is just so open, no buildings blocking the way, and you can see the thunderstorms, clouds moving through, and the change in color of the sky um, every day, just so vivid. And that was something that, uh, that was hanging in my mind all this time. And when I got into college, I thought, kind of want to know why that happened. So that's how I got into it. Well, since we know that we can't make it snow, I guess we'll just have to wait till next winter. Let's go back home.